Welcome, everyone. This is Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio, episode 599. Today, Andrew and I are talking about how to bring students back after COVID restrictions. It's going to be an important discussion. And whether or not you're a school owner or a student, I think this is an important subject for us to tackle. So stick around. If you want to know more about us and what we do, heck, who are we? Well, I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick with my co-host, Andrew Adams. We are passionate, traditional martial artists. We love martial arts, and everybody at Whistlekick loves martial arts. That's why we do what we do. It's probably why you're watching or listening to what we do. And if you want to see all the things that we do, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to see a bunch of stuff over there, all the projects and products. And speaking of products, if you find something you like in the store, you can help support us. Use the code PODCAST15, gets you 15% off. Now, the show, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, is at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We keep it easy. And if you pop over there, you're going to see every episode we've ever done. We bring you two episodes each and every week, all under the heading of connecting, educating, and entertaining you, the traditional martial artist. And if nothing else, Andrew and I are entertained. So, you know, if you don't like it, that's fine, because we're enjoying ourselves. <laughs> If you want to support us, because we do a bunch of stuff for this community, we're, we're, we are heck bent on doing as much good as we can. You got lots of things you can do. You can make a purchase, share an episode, follow us on social media. You could tell a friend, pick up a book on Amazon, leave a review, or support our Patreon. If you think the new shows that we make are worth a whopping 63 cents a piece, consider supporting us at five bucks a month. At five bucks a month, you're going to get behind the scenes posts on episodes that are upcoming. We don't tell anybody anywhere else who's coming and when on the show, as well as you get an exclusive bonus audio episode every month. And if you're willing to throw a little bit more money down, you know, at 10 bucks, you get video and it just goes up from there. In fact, we have tiers where you get individual coaching and training for me, if that is of interest to you. And if you figure out the hourly rate, uh, it's actually quite affordable. So <laughs> think about that. It's uh it's honestly, if a bunch of people did it, it's totally not sustainable, but I'll do what I can, right? We're, we're, try, we're just trying to cover the cost here. The show is not cheap to put on. And it, clearly from Andrew and I, you can see it's not wardrobe. No. And despite what my shirt says, I really do know karate. Are you sure? <laughs> I think so. I hope so. Otherwise, you are not the person we want, to, we want on here. No, that's not true. You could you could know a different martial art, and I would still want you here. I, that's I have fair. fun. I have fun recording with you, my friend. COVID, it's been over a year, so we're recording this. Most of the episodes that we do aren't date specific, but it is March sixteenth. It has been just about a year, depending on where you are, since lockdown started. Now, some martial arts schools have continued to operate, and they did not have restrictions, and so this episode may not be as of be of as much interest there we go to you as in areas where there are restrictions and honestly most places still have restrictions here in the northeast every state has some manner of restriction that yep. i'm aware of on number of people and masks and distancing and things and it's really impacted everything now there are two ways that we can look at at this topic we can look at it as recruiting students saying hey come back and train and then we can also look at it as the what protocols should be in place. Hmm. Now, let's tackle the second part first, because I think it's a shorter conversation. I'm not going to tell anybody what is the right thing to do in their yep. school for COVID-19 and keeping things safe. That is up to you as a school. Yeah. And every state will be different. And uh, every state's is, got their own the, restrictions. Yep. Yeah. There are, are there are there schools out there that are skirting the requirements? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you to do it. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm going to tell you to do what works for you mm -hmm. and to be safe. Everybody's got to do that. And as martial artists, I think we have a pretty good sense of doing what is safe for us. You know, martial arts is probably the biggest thing in the world that doesn't really have a governing body. It's yeah, pretty ridiculous. Point. We, we yep. don't, you know, and ridiculous in a good way. I think it's great. Uh, and when people talk about, you know, legislating martial arts, I get really bent out of shape about it. I don't think it should happen. Uh, that's a whole other conversation that we're not going to have. So today, <laughs> probably ever. 
<laughs> probably I I don't I don't know that we want my political beliefs put out on the air because uh might make some heads explode. That's okay. Um we got to do what works for us as individuals. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that, right? So we can put that piece aside. So the other piece, I, the the heart of what we were going to talk about is how do we get them back in the door? Yeah, and you know this topic is is rel- relevant, I think, for a lot of us. You know, my sure. wife was the one. My wife was the one that brought it up because, uh, you know, both she and I will be vaccinated fairly soon. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the rest of the country will hopefully, knock on wood, also. Um, and we in our school have a handful of students who were uncomfortable doing classes in person mm-hmm. when, when the restrictions allowed. We we are allowed to have four students in our in our school at a time legally mm-hmm. um, because of spacing. Yeah, because of spacing. Yep. yep. Um, and so they have stayed home because they don't feel safe in person, which is sure. totally fine. Some of them have chosen to take classes on zoom Mm -hmm. but some of them said i this is just not what i want to do i don't feel not comfortable or safe but they didn't feel that they would get a good learning experience over zoom which again totally fine not every i I attended a number of zoom classes not every instructor did a good job yep some of them did a great job and i you know quiet round of applause for for you all for adapting but some of them didn't and it meant that some students said this experience is not worth my time that yeah, I don't absolutely. have value there and I'm going to step back. Yep. And that's fine. But with schools, hopefully being able to open up again uh, in the foreseeable future, um, how do we as school owners hmm. try and get those students to come back? Yeah. That's the discussion. Now we've got a couple different categories of students. And whenever I approach a problem like this, I draw lines and and put people into boxes and think, you know, here's an aspect of the problem. How do I solve that aspect? One of the aspects that we can't solve are how do we get people that aren't comfortable training in person to come train in person? You can't. Mm. Yeah. You can't. If in, in any given martial arts school, just based on my sense, you're going to see 80 ish percent, right? There, here's a place where the 80, 20 rule plays in. If you're unfamiliar with it, um, in any complex set, you will find that twenty um, percent ish. You know, sometimes it's ninety, sometimes it's seventy-five. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it comes from. Uh, I know it from retail. Twenty percent of your products are responsible for eighty percent of your revenue. If you op- reopen the doors, eighty percent of your students are going to come back. Twenty percent are going to be concerned. Now, do you cater to that twenty percent? No. I don't think you should because that 20% is probably going to be uncomfortable no matter what you do and you risk alienating the 80%. And this is, this is a rule that I use in my consulting when I'm working with, with schools, other non-martial arts clients, look for that 80, 20 and, and understand it Mm -hmm. with every decision. Okay. So that leaves the students that are going to be comfortable coming back, given some kind of reasonable and appropriate measures. Right. We don't have to unpack what that is, that that is, you know, that that, again, that's going to be different depending on the school. So what are the problems in bringing people back? They're doing other things. Their momentum has carried them away from the school. Yeah. They're used to, you know, some schools are just putting out videos instead of live classes. They're used to training on their own time. And I think another one, regression. Abs- that that was the first thing I was going to discuss. I, I think the I think that's the one that we should spend the most time on. So let's just go through those others real quick. How do you get people to come back just in general? Well, you've got to get them excited. Absolutely. Yeah. Every decision we make is a is about value. It's an exchange of value. If I'm going to contribute my time, energy, and money to coming to class, I have to get more out of it than I would in not investing that time, energy, and money. Every single person who attends martial arts class either has come to that decision or maybe it's a kid, their parent has come to that decision. Time, energy, and money is of less value than the martial arts education coming back. So quality communication about what is going on, when it is going on, and being excited and hitting the ground running would be a really cool thing to do. What's the number one thing that I suspect at most schools people are missing 
free form partner movement, sparring, yep. self defense, grappling, you know, wh- whatever it is in your school. So having some time, assuming that you are comfortable, your students are comfortable, and your your state regulations permit such, having maybe extra classes with that to get people ramped back up might make sense. Hey, we're going to have a sparring class. Well, we've never had a sparring class before. Well, then people are going to get really pumped about it. Yeah. Yep. A forms class. Because a lot of us have been training, okay, I got to shorten up that st- that stance when I take that last punch because the couch is there. And giving people the opportunity to use full space and remember, okay, this is what my forms feel like with long stances. If that's Exactly. Or I don't have to keep shifting, not because of the couch, but because of the camera. Right. Right. Or every time I step back and I do this elbow, I've got to make sure that the kid's not there or the dog. <laughs> right. Okay. Bam. Right. Yep. You can't just commit to it in the way that you would normally do that, depending on, again, what the form or the technique is. So I think having a variety of specific classes as a temporary measure to get people really excited about the things that they're missing and cater to those things that they are missing. If you do those classes and you spend the time doing basics in place that they could have been doing at home, slap yourself because that's not what they're going to want. Yep. Are you as the instructor going to want to have some one-on-one contact with them because you've been teaching on Zoom and you haven't been able to make that correction and for the last year you've watched that person regress in the way that they put their hand? Yes, you're going to want to do that but it's not about you. Exactly. It's about them and keeping them engaged. I take it back to value exchange. You teaching are in service to your students. What is the title of this episode? It's about bringing people back, getting Mm -hmm. them back in the door. So it's about giving them so much value, more value than you were giving them the past year, whatever that is. Even if you weren't teaching Zoom class, people were coming in. The world's starting to open back up. People have other options. There are a lot of martial arts schools who have done well because there weren't other options. But as other options start to open back up and people want to travel and do other things again, what are you going to do to make sure that that value exchange can now compete with these other things? And and I think it's important to note that we're talking about bringing students back. That means they already were students. You can talk to them with language that Joe Schmo that wants to, I want to learn whatever it's a whole different subject it's very different because yeah. they're going to have a, a knowledge base that joe schmo off the street won't have exactly. so utilize that you know let them know specifically what they what they will be working on because they're going to know and thank them thank them for sticking it out if you were a school that when covid hit you begged and i saw schools begging begged your students to keep paying their dues so you could continue to have a career and pay your rent or whatever that messaging was, you better step up and thank them. Yeah, You better throw them a party or a barbecue or do a a weekend long seminar for free. I don't care what it is, but if you do not show your appreciation to those students who kept you going, you are going to strike out. They're going to, you're going to lose face. And I think that that's important to point out. And I'm, I'm not being subtle about this because yeah. I watch schools doing this. It's the same messaging that I see come out in a conventional year with, hey, you know, we're here over the summer, too. And why are you losing out to soccer? Because you're because of value exchange. Why are you losing out to summer camp? Because of value exchange. Mm-hmm. You, you may not want to hear that. Everything that we do comes down to value. When we make a decision, it's because there isn't something that is of better value to us at that time. But Jeremy, I, I don't pay my taxes because of value. Yes, you do, because you don't want to go to prison. Yeah, absolutely. It is all about value. And the more value you provide, the better you will do. And if you look at the most successful people in the world, they are providing the most value. Not necessarily to you, but to others. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, and I, and I think instructors have to understand in terms of the regression that it's not going to be necessarily just the regression of their techniques, but in their, their physical well-being. you know, like uh, if you have a class that normally pre COVID was, uh, you know, a, a, 
a half an hour of cardio stuff and then a half an hour of technique stuff and that was your hour-long class or whatever the students coming back after having taken a year off might not be able to handle the half an hour of cardio like they could a year ago because they have they're out of shape and please don't try to make up for it in one or two classes this is something that drives me insane unfortunately a lot of folks in the martial arts industry do not understand how the human body actually works in terms of recovery Mm -hmm. let me put it really succinctly the human body is amazing at adapting when you damage the body it recovers and adapts but if you damage it too much it prioritizes recovery over adaptation to say it another way if you start or finish off your class with such punishing physical activity that people cannot walk the next day, you are not doing them any kind of service. What if they get attacked that day? What if they're walking, hobbling down the street because they got smoked at class last night and they can't defend themselves, hmm. right? We need to think about that. Slow, steady progress, like everything else we do, includes physical adaptation. That's a rant that I, I try not to have as often as it comes into my brain. It drives me insane. <laughs> no, it's we're good. Self, we're, it's our school, self-defense is important. None of our students can walk after class. How does that line up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are we missing here? It's about value. Make sure you're thanking students. Make sure you're considering their physical abilities. Make sure you're remembering your place as instructor as providing service to them. What about the role of the students? We've been speaking to the instructors so far. What, let's flip it, talk, talk to the students now. What, what's their responsibility as part of this equation? Um, I, I've said it on a ton of episodes before, open, clear communication. I think yeah. you need to have a discussion with your instructor on what you feel comfortable mm-hmm. and not comfortable doing. Um, you know, there are things, like I mentioned earlier, our school is allowing four students in the dojo but not everyone's comfort level of those four students in the dojo might be the same. And so I think having a discussion with your instructor about what you are and are not comfortable doing is really, really important, especially moving forward. Someone who has been vaccinated might have a totally different comfort level than someone who has not. Yeah. And there's not, if if you have like, here's a question, Andrew, out of, if you have four students at a time, I'm assuming there are more than four students in the school. Yep. So in an environment where you would typically have everybody in one room, you're now probably going to have multiple classes. And so maybe those classes have different arrangements based on comfort. Mm -hmm. This is a class where we won't be making physical contact. This is a class where we will. This is a class where, um, let's say based on state protocols, you might have people who can have masks or, or, or you're permitted to not use masks while exercising, mm-hmm. martial arts, exercise, right? But maybe you have classes that are less intense where people who want to wear masks can't, and it's a mask-only class. Right? Everybody wears a mask in this instructor, right? So you start to look at, again, providing value, providing the sort of experiences that your students want, give them opportunities, and make them feel understood. Yep. And again, on the student side, the discussion, part of it would be what you feel comfortable doing. Part of it would be what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, letting the student, you know, I I have have been out of training for a year. Maybe I've been doing my own solo, you know, form work or whatever. Um, Let the instructor know what you feel you'd feel you would be comfortable working on and want to work on Um, and maybe you also have a discussion about your physical liabilities at this particular time Mm. you know that would that would lead into that as well so open clear communication leading to value absolutely there's the formula for everything yep is there anything that we want to hit before we wind down anything that either we want to make sure people think about doing or maybe not doing don't get just don't get mad don't get mad at others don't get mad at yourself don't get mad at your teacher don't get mad at your students it's it's not going to be like it was day one it'll come back fast but it'll only come back fast if we give people the opportunity to come back yep 
maybe, maybe you're having a little bit more fun. You've got to rebuild that community. Got to be patient. In, in order in order to get really good in martial arts, you have to get comfortable letting others use your body and you and, and using others' bodies, right? It, it, it has to happen at some point. And if there's been a year of disconnect from that, people that you were comfortable with, that you knew, okay, when they move this way, I got to move this way because you were just, you're, you could flow so well. That has been broken. It's going to take time to rebuild it. And it might not be the same. So just be patient. Yep, absolutely. Don't yell. Don't yell at students. I just, I have these visions of instructors out there. You guys clearly weren't practicing for the last year. Blah, why do I even come here? Blah. I've known instructors like this and I could just, although most of them, many of them have probably shut down their schools. So <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not an issue. Um, There's that. You know, we've certainly lost some, some good and even great schools. But just from my observation, um, a lot of the schools that we lost were people who didn't want to put in the work as, as school owners and instructors. So, um, you know, my, I'm hopeful. My hope is that most of the ones that shut down are ones that maybe it was time. No, not, not trying to throw shade at anybody. If your school shut down and that wasn't you, obviously I'm not talking to you. So please don't be offended. <laughs> All right. Anything else we want, we want to tackle before we, we call it a day. No, I think that's good. All right. If we miss something, if there are other things, especially if, as you're getting going, if there are things, Oh, Jeremy and Andrew didn't even talk about this. They talked about this and this, but what about this? You know, we want to hear about, let us know. We want to know. Tell us, tell us your thoughts. Tell me all your thoughts on martial arts. Cause I'd really like to hear them. Song reference intended. <laughs> Not everybody's going to get that. That's okay. It's cool. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for watching or listening. We want to hear from you. Go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. So we're going to find show notes and transcripts and videos in every episode we have ever done. So check it out. And if you're down to support us and the work that we do, you have lots of options. You can share an episode, leave a review, maybe on iTunes or Spotify or something. Tell a friend or contribute to our Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. And if you're looking for the ideal, the best strength and conditioning program just for martial artists, I made it. Me. I got some help, but I made it. And you can get it at whistlekick.com. And you can use the code podcast15 to save yourself 15% on that or anything else you see. We want to hear your guest suggestions, your topic suggestions, your feedback on this and all the things that we do. So follow us on social media at whistlekick. Or easiest way to reach out, email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'll be sure to share it with Andrew. That's it for now. Until next time, train hard, train hard smile, smile, and have, have a great day. day.